guys, Salini here and welcome to How to OC. Today we are going to focus on gem OCs also called gem zonas from the TV show Steven Universe. Let's get right into it. As stated in my last video of this series, we have two options to start our OC creation with. First would be backstory and personality and the second option is the design. In this video we are going to start off with the first option so let's get started. So to start the creation of our OC, we should pick a gem. So to find a suitable gem for you, you should google for gemstones. It is best to take a gem that isn't too popular, so your OC doesn't have a lot of competition in the gem zone of you, if that would be a problem for you. Once you have decided, a little bit of the personality of your gem has already been set. Now you probably think, what are you saying Delini? I thought that's my free choice. And yes, it is your free choice, but just like the crystal gems, your gem has a power in real life that defines most Steven Universe characters. Hold on, don't leave, let me explain. Okay, so what I mean by that is that if you search on Google for gemstone meanings, you will find a lot of information about the powers of these gems. Of course, gemstones have no actual power, but there are tons of people who believe in their powers and for us it is a perfect source for the thing that defines your character, since Rebecca Sugar herself uses this to build her characters. To give you some examples, just search existing Steven Universe gems and google their meanings. You will find out that some characteristics are very accurate to the real-life counterparts. But keep in mind that antagonist gems have a reversed meaning. So if you want to make an antagonist gem, then you have to use the opposite of their gem meaning to form a character. After that is done, we can get to the next step, which is deciding on which team your gem is on. If it's a homeworld gem, then most of them are antagonistic, so yours should be too. But be creative with it. Antagonistic gems can come in a variety of personalities. Some are passive and some are aggressive. Decide your gem's personality carefully and take your time. For the crystal gems, you should make your gem a protagonist. There are some dangerous crystal gems like Bismuth, but keep in mind that their goals are the same as the one of the main cast, which makes them a protagonist. So if you make a crystal gem, then make sure they have the same goal as the other crystal gems. Another important thing is their purpose. Your gem should have some type of ability or weapon that reflects their real life counterpart as well. Research your gem and pick out facts about it that can translate into their weapon and abilities. If you are done with that, we can start with part 2 which is the design. Let's start with the gem. For that, let's look at some existing gems. What can we see? They are pretty simple and have a shape that real life gems also have. But what shape should your gem have? Well, if we look at some character gems, we can see a pattern. For example, Peridot has a triangular cut, which to me looks like something technical. Lapis gem is shaped like a teardrop, which makes sense because she has water rings. The same rule goes for Aquamarine. Eyeball has it on her eye, like a pirate, and Pearl has her round like a pearl. So try to make your gem represent either their ability or their real life counterparts like Pearl. Keep in mind also that the gems are always cut like gems are in real life. Don't use raw shapes as their gem. Another thing to notice, the gems like Jasper that have marks all over their gem have these marks all over their bodies instead of their gem. Their gem on their body usually has just one color. So I highly suggest you to do the same if your gem has those markings. Now let's get over to your gem Sona's body. Steven Universe gems have a very human-like body, so unless your gem is corrupted, let your gem keep those human characteristics. If we examine the style of the show a bit, we can see that the gems have a body build out of several geometric shapes stuck together. We can also see that clearly when a gem reforms after poofing, so it would be best to stick to that technique when deciding what body type your gem has. Once the body is all done and decided, we can start to create the clothing. Here it can get a bit tricky. After examining the style of the show a bit more, I noticed that the gem clothings almost always resemble some type of clothing style. 
For example, Pearl has clothes like a ballerina, Sapphire is dressed like a maiden, and Garnet looks like a 80s disco star. So when you give your gem their clothing, just pick a style you like and minimalize it so it fits into the show style. Speaking of minimalistic, you should also stay minimalistic for every gem design you create, except for fusions. And don't forget the star or the diamond depending on what side your gem is on. The last thing I wanted to talk about for the clothing is that if your gem has a name like Snowflake Obsidian or Tiger's Eye, then these characteristics should play into the design of the gem's clothing as well. Now that that's done, let's start with the colors. First off, your gem should always have a palette that consists of the color your real life gem also has. While you can change the hue of the colors for your gem clothes and hair, your gem's skin color should stay as close to its gem as possible. There are, however, some exceptions like Lapis and Peridot. So if you prefer a lighter or darker variation of your gem skin color, feel free to do so. Overall, your gem should have a color palette consisting out of 4 to 6 color variations of your gem's color. The last thing to create for your gem now is their gem weapon. Some gems have only their abilities like Lapis Water Wings or Peridot's Metal Powers, while others own a weapon they can summon for fighting. This weapon is other than the gem's appearance very detailed. Another thing that is exclusive to gem weapons is that they always have crystals on them, that have some color of the gem your character has on their body. You can see that on Amethyst Whip or Garnet's Gauntlets. If your gem is very powerful and intelligent, they may have two powers. We can see that with Pearl's hologram and her spear, as well as with Acromarine, her wings and her wand. And don't forget that your gem weapon should fit their appearance and personality as well. And now your gem is done and ready to be put in whatever you like. But if you want to further improve your gem, you can always contact art critics and get a detailed critique of your gem and their appearance to improve it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any suggestions on how I can improve my videos, then let me know in the comments. Goodbye!